The 20 House Republicans who voted against the GOP health care bill, Congressman Leonard Lance of New Jersey. Congressman, um, why, uh, why didn't you step in line and, and vote for the bill? You could have gone to the White House and had your picture taken with the president and gone to the Oval Office. Uh, Mika, I always try to vote my conscience and vote what is in the best interest of the district I'm honored to serve, and certainly I wanted to see a CBO score uh, before voting on this legislation. And did you have a chance to read it? I have read a summary of it, but I didn't read all 1,800 pages or whatever the number is. But certainly important to me, Mika, is a CBO score because that informs us here in Congress as to the particulars of any piece of legislation. Congressman, it's Willie Geist, a fellow New Jersey guy. As you talk to the people in your district, let's say Hunterdon County, what inside this bill would be most concerning to them and to you specifically? Is it Medicaid expansion? Is it pre-existing conditions? What would most impact the people in your district? Uh, I don't think that this bill will lower premiums for uh, average Americans, number one. I'm also concerned about the pre-existing conditions issue. It's attempted to be addressed in this bill, but not thoroughly enough from my perspective. And of course, uh, Willie, New Jersey was one of those states that expanded Medicaid. So what would happen? Just give a real world example if that Medicare is rolled back in 2020. Who would be affected by that? Um, there are uh, residents in the congressional district I serve, <clears throat> roughly 20,000, I believe, who had uh, expanded health care coverage based upon Medicaid. Um, New Jersey was one of, I think, 31 states to expand Medicaid. But I also hope with that Democrats will come to the table. Um, I know Congressman Ryan earlier said that uh, none of us wants to work with the uh, Democrats. I want to work in a bipartisan capacity on this bill because I think the exchanges are not in good shape. We in New Jersey originally had five insurers for the exchange. We're now down to two. So certainly we need to do a better job regarding health care in this country. C Congressman, this is David Ignatius. I wanted to ask you, you did not vote for this uh, bill, but I'm wondering what you were hearing from other Republicans who did, whether they feel that this may be a dangerous vote for them, that, that next year they may be t tarred with having supported the, uh, a bill that's unpopular for the reasons that you were suggesting. What are you hearing from, from other Republicans? Uh, David, I think there is a, a, a virtually uh, universal consensus that uh, this bill is going to be modified significantly in the Senate. And of course, various senators, including Senator Corker, have said that. And so I hope that as the uh, matter proceeds uh, across the Capitol, uh, that the Senate will examine this on its own. We do need reform of the system, but I don't think that this bill does that. Congressman, Hillary Clinton won your district, one of the few uh, Republicans in the House had a Hillary Clinton win, uh, win his or her district. Was there any political consideration for you here? You've already drawn two Democratic challengers for your race coming up in 2018. Did you think to yourself, if I vote for this, I'll probably lose to a Democrat? Uh, no, there was not a political calculation. It was based upon what I thought was best for the district. Secretary Clinton did win the district by one point, 3,800 votes. I, I was honored to win by 38,000 votes. Uh, Barack Obama carried the district in 2008. Mitt Romney carried it in 2012. And so it is a classic East Coast district. Um, but I believe that my views are the views of the overwhelming majority of, of the district I serve. Congressman Leonard Lentz, thank you so much for being on the show this morning. Thank you, Mika. So, uh, Heidi, uh, final thoughts? Well, I actually wanted to ask the congressman because he, he voted against the final bill, but I'm pretty sure he voted for the bill in committee. And I think that that is the, the predicament of a number of these Republicans is that uh, they were pushed to do this um, in, in either in committee or on the floor. I think so we still have spread, them. Congressman, spread, are you still there? The board. Yeah, yeah, yes, I am Go still ahead, here. Go ahead, Congressman. Maker. You voted for it in committee. Uh, I voted for amendments in committee in the Commerce Committee that included a 
provision not changing in any way the pre-existing conditions, I was not on the Ways and Means Committee and did not believe that the refundable tax credits were strong enough, and the final bill came out of the Budget Committee. Uh, I certainly agree with what our committee did on the issue of pre-existing conditions that left that alone, and as you know, the bill was modified uh, uh, later in the process, and uh, uh, I think that the CBO score was really dispositive in my analysis. Heidi. Okay. Um, uh, what about the lowering premiums? I mean, isn't the whole structure of the bill essentially the same? You expressed concerns about lowering premiums and that this plan wouldn't essentially do that. But isn't that essentially the same as the original bill that you supported? Um, I think that uh, I was uh, informed by the CBO score. I think it's uh, not mm. necessarily inappropriate to begin a process in a committee structure, but before we vote on a bill on the floor, I think we have to have a CBO score. Let me say, however, that I do think we have to address the fact that uh, the exchanges are not doing well and that in one-third of the counties in this country, not one-third of the population, but one-third of the counties, there is only one insurer, and we, we have to work in a bipartisan capacity to address that serious issue. All right, Congressman.